I would okay. like now to uh, to, uh, ask the participants that if they have any queries, please put it on your chat. And we will, I would like to in, invite Dr. Long now to give his talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Can we you can hear, hear me? you. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. something wrong uh, with my computer's camera, so you can't see me today, but uh, I hope that you can hear me clearly. Okay. You, we can hear you clearly. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, as being interested by Professor Long, it's my great honor to have this opportunity to share some information about yaks and herders on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And first of all, uh, I will briefly introduce Professor Long and myself. Uh, Professor Long works in School of Life Sciences, Lanzhou University, and, and at, the, at the same time, uh, also as the director of International Center for uh, Tibetan Plateau Ecosystem Management and the uh, height of the Tibetan Rangeland and Yak Research Institute. He has maintained cooperation with the international universities and uh, uh, research institutes for many years, and also worked uh, in the International Center for integrated mountain development for four years. And uh, his research research interested um, including ecosystem management of alpine grassland on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau and uh, sustainable development of grass husbandry on the Qinghai Tibetan uh, Plateau. Also um, recently uh, working with the transformation, upgrading and uh, promotion of the value chain of the yak industry. So Professor Wong has been engaged in research in these areas for more than uh, 13, 30 years. So it's quite a long time. Amazing. And uh, yeah, about myself. So I'm from School of Public Health, Lanzhou University. And my research interests including food nutrition and safety, uh, development and application of novel yeast, also the development and uh, utilization of yak milk and uh, products. So before we discuss about the yak, I think let's review its living environment first, the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And I believe all of you have heard about this area and also there may be some of you working on this place. And the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau uh, is the highest uh, biogeographic unit on earth, above 4,000 meters on average. And the total area is about 2.5 million square kilometers. And the grassland area is greater than 50%. The plateau has been widely regarded as the third pole and also the roof of the world. Okay, so we all know that the polar bears, they can adapt to the extremely cold environment near the North Pole with their uh, heat absorbing skin and the thick uh, subcutaneous fight, and also life exercise, and also I think meat as the only food. And uh, the penguins, they can survive in the South Pole, rely, also rely on their uh, thick and dense feathers, and also thick uh, subcutaneous fight. But now comes the question, why can yaks live on the third pole, the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau? I think we should start with the origin of the yak. And according to the archaeological and the genetic studies, and they have suggested that the yak and cattle, they separated about 4.5 million years ago. And then about 2 million years later, yak and North American basin separated. And these wild yaks then traveled large uh, long, very long distances and migrated to the central area of the Himalayas, the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau area, and with the altitude ranging from 3,000 to 5,500 meters above the sea level. And in order to adapt the severe cold, less oxygen, strong UV radiation environment in this area, the yaks have evolved special adaptations in physiology, nutrient metabolism, and also the foraging habits. 
Then about 10,000 years ago, the yak was domesticated from its wild ancestor. So actually the humans arrived in the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau very early, but uh, it has been uh, estimated that uh, the domestication and the significant increase in the number of yaks has been combined with the two population expansions in the Asian highlands. And the highlands is not suitable for crop cultivation. So the yak herding is a major part of the mountain livelihood. And this map, this map, where's my mouse? It's here, okay. And this map shows the mountain systems located in the Asian highlands. And starting from the north here, uh, Siam in Russia, and the Kongai in the Mongolia, and also uh, the Altai, Tianshan, uh, Hindu Kush Karakoram, and Kunlun, and Qilian, Tibetan Plateau, and Hengduan, and also Himalaya. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So according to the recent data, that there are about six, six, uh, 16 million yaks. Uh, population in the world and distributed in 10 countries with more than 40 yak herding ethnic groups in 11 mountain ranges of the Asian highlands. And over 95% over 95 of the animals can be found in China. So China with the highest population of yak right now. So after a long period, of the evolution and the adaptation, the yak has become a key species in the Tibetan plateau ecosystem. And yak is an environmental, well, we usually say that yak is an environmental friendly animal with low carbon, which means uh, the methane release and the nitrogen saving features, and also maintain the ecosystem functions. And there's another thing, yak also as the mobile bank to support herders' livelihood, and which also reflects the importance of yak to the herders. And for more details, we will discuss later. And uh, many years ago, the 10th Banchan Lama uh, Great Master said, no yaks, no Tibetans. And recently, I also heard another highly respected Tibetan scholar said that, in fact, it can also in reverse which fully reflects the close connection between the yak and the Tibetan herders. Okay, so therefore for a long time, the herders have always regarded yaks as their family members. Even now, they still re uh, regard the yaks as their family members with highly dependent on yaks in their uh, daily lives. Almost every yak has its own names and also easy to manage and identify as well. Also, in the process of the of raising yak, the release habit is still maintained. And if considered from the animal freedom index, and the yak is also an animal with high welfare. So after domesticated, yak became an amazing animal. Uh, I'd like to say that. And they can provide the Tibetans with transport, milk and meat for food, and wool for clothes and tents, and also dung for fuel. And sometimes its fur is even to be used to decorate the uh, secret high regard prayer flag poles. And although the yaks are multi purpose animals and they are raised mainly for milk production on the Qinghai Tibetan plateau for milk production. And the, the composition of the diet of Tibetan nomads is usually quite simple. And besides the baked barley, mainly yak milk and some other dairy products. So how important is yak milk to the highland, herd, to the highland herders? And as we have mentioned that the Qinghai Tibetan plateau is located at very high altitude with low temperature, low temperature here, the average temperature um, about minus five to minus one degrees yearly, and also oxygen deficit, uh, low air pressure and uh, 
strong UV radiation. And this extreme environment may bring the health challenges to the herders, such as the hyperbaric hypoxia. Uh, it can become progressively more severe with the increased altitude. And also the high altitude um, pulmonary edema and sometimes the strong UV radiation can cause uh, changes to the cellular uh, metabolism of the organism, etc. However, the herders, they have been living healthy on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau for numerous generations. And this suggests that they have developed some unique adaptive mechanisms. So the Tibetans rarely suffer from high altitude sickness and their eyesight and skin remain mostly uninjured. And these findings suggest that eating behavior is critically important in mitigating high altitude stress. We know that fruits and vegetables, uh, they are rich in antioxidant uh, compounds would be helpful uh, in abating the altitude. Uh, induced oxidative challenges. But for the herders in highland, fruit and vegetables are not commonly, are not, not commonly available for them. So instead, they heavily on consumption of yak milk and its products. And here's a picture that uh, showed the nutritional prop, uh, properties of the yak milk. And it's rich in uh, minerals, minerals, vitamins, and proteins, and some other uh, nutritional nutrients. And here are some examples for different nutrient content in different animal milks. Uh, table one is the conventional nutrient content, and table two shows the uh, protein expression profile in different milks. So usually, in order to have their uh, calves survive the harsh cold and uh, anoxic conditions of their habitat, the yak uh, usually produce milk with high content of uh, dry matter, uh, content high dry matter and fight protein as well as abundant nutrients compared with other uh, ruminants and uh, non-ruminants. Uh, table three and table four comprise the, the minerals and vitamins in different milks. Among these ingredients, uh, high vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E in yak milk make it with uh, very good antioxidant properties. And a large amount vitamin D can promote the absorption of calcium and bone health. And for fat acids of different ruminants, in general, the proportions of total uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids here is higher in yak milk fat and it's produced than, uh, is, it, and its products uh, usually uh, than cattle, uh, sheep, or, or goats. And some studies also reported that yak milk in um, the yak milk and its products are particularly rich in some biological uh, active fatty acid. And an important one is the CLA. I think uh, everyone knows this: the conjugated amino acid acid CLA. And with a variety of important physiological functions, such as uh, antioxidation, improving the immunity, increasing bone density, etc. And also is rich in yak milk and its products. And for the uh, CLA, so the wide range of its contents and values can be attributed to various factors, such as the breeding system, geographic area, dairy, cows, and goat breeds, and also compared with the housekeeping uh, or house feeding, grazing can significantly increase, uh, grazing can significantly increase the level of CLA. And also the composition of the forage also affects the level of CLA. And there's a study report that the CLA content in yak cheese is four times uh, than that of the cold cheese. Wow. Okay, and in addition, uh, there are also uh, abundant microbial community in the traditional fermented uh, yak milk. And our team here 
uh, our team collected uh, the yak yogurt samples from five major uh, ecological regions of the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And the sampling sites uh, with altitude ranged from 3,000 meters to nearly 5,000 meters. And according to the sequencing results, the bacterial community are varied in uh, different ecoregions. And the lactobacillus, the lactobacillus of the red color here, the lactobacillus and the streptococcus account for 95 to 98 percent of all bacteria in the yak yogurt. And the Saccharomyces is the dominant fungus in the fermented uh, yak milk. And we also uh, explored the potential advantages of the lactate acid bacteria as a new type of bioprecipitate and uh, tested if the lactic uh, uh, acid bacteria can improve the shelf life and the uh, edible quality of post-harvest strawberry. And the results indicated that the two strings have the potential to promote biological preservation, uh, which is economically important to reduce the loss uh, due to the strawberry spoilage. Okay, so the unique ecological uh, environment of the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau uh, gives the yak milk a natural, uh, green, uh, organic, and safe characteristics, and which can better ensure the full protection from the grassland to the table and house. And here are some uh, traditional yak milk processing examples. And the modifications to these processes are dependent on the amount of yak milk av available. And the milk and the milk products from yaks, uh, such as butter, uh, yogurt, and chila, this one, I, I don't know if someone has tried this, it's really hard and dried curds, it's very hard to taste, um, but it's delicious, I think. Uh, are the main food items uh, consumed by the Tibetans. And the raw butter, this one, is usually mixed with the uh, milk tea here. And normally the herders will leave part of the milk tea and mixed with the baked barley each time then to make zamba here, this one, this is zamba, yeah. But uh, for cheese making is not practiced extensively on the plateau because the quantities of the milk uh, are limited. So only a few Tibetan households will process the techniques. Okay, so this picture, this is my daughter. Uh, so uh, I took her to visit a, a herder's family uh, last month. So this is the first time for her to try the yak milk tea. This one is yak milk tea. And then uh, she tried to make them back by herself. And then she told me, it's so delicious. And she was quite happy <laughs> and told me so delicious. So this also makes me uh, feel more confidence on the uh, yak uh, industry and the yak business. Okay. So uh, for the industry, uh, the common yak products on the market um, we can see some uh, yogurt here, and this is a kind of uh, cheese, and also uh, the milk powder or the infant formula for the uh, kids, and also some butter. This is a liquid milk, milk and also have some other products. Um, and now uh, we also have the yak milk ice cream here, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I hope I can try sometime in the future, uh, maybe very soon, <laughs> okay. So uh, at present, the Chinese yak milk companies and the herders, they usually take the form of dairy cooperatives. And this form played a very important role in improving milk production and increasing uh, the income for the members. And the yak milk are purchased from the herders and then processed in the factories and transformed to the consumers. So in the process uh, of the transformation, the herders have bene uh, benefit 
uh, deeply and also promote the local uh, economic development. And uh, here is an example. Uh, this is a company called uh, Treasure of Plato. Uh, this is the name of this company, Treasure of Plato. And uh, we have been cooperating with uh, for a long time. And this, uh, they have established four production bases and more than 50 milk collection stations on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And more than 10 million Chinese yuan has been invested uh, in the research and uh, provides the milk tank to the herders. This one, this, this tank they provide to the herders. And the annual uh, milk expenses will return uh, to the herders about 50 uh, to 16 million Chinese yuan. So in the process of milk collection, we can see from these pictures and the, the herders will transport the filtered fresh milk to the station first with this tank and then queue up for testing according to the milk collection process. And then after the onset inspection, uh, they will register the quantity quality and the amount of the milk delivered by each household. And then the milk will uh, be poured into the refrige, the tank and refrige uh, for shipment. And um, here's a point. So the milk can only be shipped back to the company when the temperature drops below four degrees. Okay, so there's a whole procedure. And in recent years, uh, minor dairy products have become more and more popular with consumers uh, due to their special uh, bioactive substances. And the yak milk is one of the most important members. So such as the milk powder and health products uh, specially adapted to the uh, elderly people and infant formula, and also some yak milk uh, probiotic slice. And also they have some special uh, milk powder for the pregnant, uh, pregnant women and breastfeeding uh, period. And however, there are still uh, many challenges uh, in the development of yak milk industry. Uh, the yak milk production uh, cooperative, uh, cooperatives are different from the uh, world's largest dairy cooperatives. And a critical impact factor is the low yield of yak milk and only produced uh, in the Tibetan areas. On the other hand, uh, some traditional herders have limited knowledge of the technology input. And there are all factors uh, restricting the development of yak milk. So the universities or the research uh, institutes uh, should go deep to understand the deep, uh, difficulties and uh, also the challenges faced by the herders in their production and life, and then propose the coping strategies. And also, uh, I, I'm sure it's a good idea uh, for training the trainers and also enhance the ability of the producers. And for marketing, it is important to improve the third party agents or the business awareness of the members as well. Okay, so for summary, uh, three points, I think. The first one is yak pastoralism is the main production system of grassland on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And second, yak pastoralism is vital to maintaining the livelihood and income of low herd, uh, local herders. And it constitutes a lifestyle with cultural, uh, with cultural characteristics and economic stability uh, in the local community. And also the spatial living environment of the yak determines the uniqueness and uh, uh, scarcity of, the, uh, of its dairy products and also with great development potential. Okay. So that's all for my presentation and thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Long for such a fascinating account of the Tibetan plateau and the yak uh, rearing there. It was amazing. Thank you very uh, much. Was, sir. 
it was particularly interesting to sort of uh, learn about the Zamba, Zamba you know, Zamba, I, yeah. I, I've eaten something similar in uh, Northwestern Nepal in Humla, which mm -hmm. also they have uh, yak populations there. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing. It brings old memories back. Thank you very much for a, for a wonderful presentation. The pictures were astounding. I don't think as Indians, we'll ever get to see the Tibetan plateau, but thank you <laughs> for showing us those pictures. Thank you very much. And uh, 